Greetings and welcome to Match Play with Ray Adams, a very special show today. I cannot wait to introduce you to my special guest, Mike Boland. And I am at Discount Tire here in Phoenix, Arizona, a company that was founded many, many years ago by Bruce Holly on some simple principles of treating the customer right and helping people reach their dreams. A company of diversity and inclusion, they gave a young man a chance when he didn't know he was gonna get that chance. You know, life deals us some very special challenges sometimes. We all know that. We find ourselves depressed, hurting, maybe sick, afraid, and we have to find a way to shine a light in our darkness. And we fall back on resources like family, friends, neighbors, and sometimes very special people that encourage us, inspire us, and uplift us. Mike Boland is one of those people that will do that for you today, although he's been through his challenges as well. But when you're around Mike and people like him, they find ways to inspire and uplift us because of their own challenges and the darkness that they went through and found their way to shine a light in that darkness. When you're around them, you're uplifted, and well, they just make you feel good. A guy who was a child actor, a guy who was a professional bowler, a guy who became a director at Discount Tire over his career, and then through life-changing and threatening cancer, another dark, dark moment for Mike, he changed careers and a sideline career became being a stand-up comedian. We're gonna talk all about that. We will get to the golf course a little bit later. We're gonna go in and meet Mike Bolin right now. Oh, and did I tell you, Mike Bolin was born without a right hand. Mike, it's great to be inside Discount Tire where all of your career started, right there at the tire changing machine yeah. when your younger brother taught you how to do it. And what I love about Discount Tire is that it's a company of inclusivity, diversity. Bruce Holly started this company many years ago to help people reach their dreams and treat the customer right. How did you find the company and their inclusivity of you when you started here? Well, you know, my brother was already working for the organization and I, uh, I saw how well he was doing because this is a very good company to work for. We're very fortunate. And uh, he gave me the opportunity to, through my brother, was able to apply for the for a position and um, go to the store and see how it was for a one-handed person to actually change a tire. And I was able to do it and they offered me a job. So going back before your discount tire days, you were on the professional bowling tour. Yeah. How did you get started and how did that go for you being a one-handed person? Well, you know, it was interesting. A friend of mine asked me to start bowling when I was 13 and I just had a passion for it. And I never not wanted to practice. I mean, if I was going to go bowl 50 games, I'd go bowl 50 games. So that's one of the things that I, I was able to take with me. And, uh, you know, I, I was able to stay on and off the tour for a couple of years there. Um, I, I'm so glad I started my career at Discount Tire, but I look back at those days fondly and uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Mike, growing up as a young person and participating in a lot of different sports and activities, and of course you had your brother who had both of his hands, you had one, but you didn't know better. And I've heard you say that you feel like it's almost a blessing that you had one hand. Yeah, I, you know what? I can't imagine myself any other way. I and mean, this is the way I was born. This is the way I am. And I've never looked at it any differently. Th this is the way I'm supposed to be. And that's just the way it's always been for me. When I met Mike through golf, of course, um, he was very uplifting and encouraging to me. And he had just won a big award from a nonprofit foundation for many, many years of help and service support donations of money and time. And I admired you for that, Mike. Did not know that Mike had been listening to my radio show for years. Yes. We didn't know each other at the time. But your story became very inspiring and uplifting to me. For you, Mike, you're a person, and I think there's many people like you, but all of us need to learn from this. You never ask if I could do something. You figured out how I can do it. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective, Ray. I, I'm glad you brought that up. I don't look at things as, hey, I wonder how a two-handed person do it and then back into how I do it. It's always how I need to approach it. And, and I'll, I'll give all the credit to my parents. They were always the type of people that gave me encouragement to be able to do things. And uh, both my dad and I really liked working on vehicles. You know, it's kind of great that I work at Discount Tire. And whenever he would give me a tool or something like that, and most of the time, I would have to figure out how to use it. He'd help me out a little bit here, but here, here's a little tip for one-handed people. Vice grips are your friend. Vice grips. Vice grips. <laughs> they, they can hold that nut on the other side while you're doing things. Now, you and your dad worked on a vintage vehicle that you still have. Tell me about that. 
I still own that vehicle. I'm very fortunate. It's a 1951 Chrysler Windsor, bought it in 1981. And uh, I bought that, <sighs> bought that vehicle the first time the movie I was in, The Trial of Billy Jack, was on television. Yeah. Got some you know, residuals and bought that vehicle. So there's still a part of that Trial of Billy Jack that I live with every day. That's the restored 1951 Chrysler Windsor Deluxe. Well, The Trial of Billy Jack and the Billy Jack movies, they're iconic and they're also cult classics big following with a lot of people. How in the world as a child actor did you get in the movie? Well, I lucked into it. Let, let's face it. You know, they said they needed a, a, a kid with one hand and I raised my hand. Well, no, I raised this <laughs> hand. What, I, don't know, I don't know which hand I raised, but uh, actually it was very, very fortunate. They needed, Where were you that, they, that you were able to raise your hand? Well, at the time, uh, they were uh, the people that were looking, the production company, to put the, the movie on, they were working with a local company that makes prosthetics. And at the time, I wore a hook. It's called Cripple Children of Arizona. And a, a few of us, I think there was like two, there's not a lot of you know, people, although two-handed people say they see one-handed people all over, but there wasn't a lot of uh, children that, that were up for it. And I'm very lucky to get the part, and it's something that I look back on fondly. And why wouldn't you? It was a lot of fun. Tell me how Tom Laughlin and his family received you and, and how you responded to them. They were so kind to me and my family. And uh, you know, for, for a few years there after, we would exchange Christmas cards. And, you know, um, for those that remember the Billy Jack series, you know, his Tom Laughlin's character, Billy Jack, was a pretty, very sensible person, a very caring person, but, you know, his, his character also, um, you know, he got a few fights here and there to protect people, yeah. right? Yeah. To protect people. To know him, he was such a genuine, nice person. He was such a nice person to me. And a real person about diversity, too. Yes, absolutely. That, that's what his message was all about. The Freedom School it, 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 in the uh, trial of Billy Jack, the one I was in, was all about that. From child acting to professional bowling to starting your career here at this wonderful discount tire company. We're at the thousandth store, by the way, uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona. I may have mentioned that, but uh, with that said, taking us through your career, you become an executive, but then you struggled with cancer. Yes. One day you felt alone. The next day they said, you've got cancer. It was life-threatening cancer. And can you just take me through that? And then how did your life change? How were you able to find the resources to shine a light in your darkness? It, it, it's never as easy. It's, it's just never easy, you know. Um, you need family, you need friends, you know, you, you need that. You, you need a good support staff, even on the medical side. I'm very fortunate that Discount Tire was able to even help me on that side. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's one of those that you, you, it's very difficult to go it alone. I, I don't want to say it's impossible. I'm sure people have done it, but I don't know how I would have been able to do it without my wife, my kids, my brother, my sister. My, my dad at the time, he's, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. And I think Discount Tire are very supportive. They were. Um, there's a, a health department, executive health department within Discount Tire that gave me the direction that I needed. Because when you're diagnosed, you, you know, you, you're not thinking as clearly as, as you, and you need that direction. Yeah. And, and, and even your support group is a little <laughs> concerned about you. and. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going down on chartered waters. Mike, during that time of cancer and your treatments and recovery, were you able to participate in other sports like sports you love, like bowling and golf? To a certain extent. It took a while for me to get my energy back up to do that, but uh, shortly after, I was able to enjoy golf. How about when we come back, Mike and I are going to go to the golf course. You stay right there with us. We will be right back. We'll be back with more match play right after these messages. Are you an E or a C? Both have Ridgeback. These are loaded with tech. Which one are you gaming? Definitely E for me. It's just so forgiving. I'm definitely an E. C is for Cheka. What else? C is for kill it. C is me. Low spinning bombs. So, are you an E or a C? Hmm. I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Pound for pound, nothing comes close.
Get them while they're hot. We're like any normal family. We just get shorter wait times because we buy and book online at discounttire.com. So easy. Which gives us more time for things like... Oh, come on, Mom. <laughs> Ready? And it's all thanks to Kyle. <laughs> Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Let's get you taken care of. You've heard me talk about Squares Golf Shoes and how they help you hit the golf ball further. And many of you are saying, oh, come on, Faldo, give us a break. How is that possible? But yes, they do. And it's proven with science. What we noticed with the Square Shoes was the shoe keeps the pressure in a more stable fashion towards inside of the trail heel, allowing pressure to get to the lead side, generating much more club and speed and distance gain. Visit squares.com. Change your shoes, change your game. Squares, the distance golf shoe. And now back to match play with your host, Ray Adams. Welcome back with Mike Boland, and we are now at the most beautiful golf course that I have been at in a very long time. And all golf courses are beautiful to me, you know that by now. We're at Troon North in Scottsdale, one of the most famous golf courses in the entire world, immaculate, and we thank them for hosting us uh, today out here with Mike Boland. We're gonna hit some balls in a little bit, but Mike and I are just gonna chat a little bit about, well, you, Mike, you know, when I talk about meeting people that are inspiring and they encourage you and when you're around them, they make you feel good. I'm talking about you, Mike, because you, when we met, inspired me, you, you encouraged me. And you're, you're one of these guys that can make you laugh, but also make you think. And there's, there's a healing about that, about you. And I want to talk a little bit about where all this came from inside of you. So from being a child actor, Mike, uh, you moved on through school, of course, and played a lot of different sports. How did your parents encourage you, and how did you approach being able to play all these different sports so well? You know, my parents were always very encouraging. They never said, don't try out for this sport, don't try out for that sport. And when I look at things, I don't look and see, hey, how does a two-handed person do this, and then try to back it into me as a one-handed uh -huh. person. I just start with, this is the way I think I, as an example, hold a golf club. This is the way I think I need to do it. So, so that's it's not, can you do something, it's how are you going to do it? Absolutely. I never, I never think I can't do it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And you said you wore a prosthetic in your younger years, um, but you don't anymore. What was the reason that you decided not to? Yeah, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily a conscious decision. It was just one of those things that, uh, for me personally, I feel like I get along better in my life without a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they're extremely important to a lot of people and, I, and, and they're definitely needed, that's for sure. And I'm I, sure we I'm have some people button. watching now that you know, have family, friends, or themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a personal choice. Um, okay, so tell me some of the sports you played. Well, basketball, and I still play basketball. I love basketball, uh, tennis. Um, I did a little bowling back in the day, if you don't mind me well, saying. Well, you did do some bowling, and Mike became a professional bowler on tour. Tell me how all that started. I had a friend of mine that asked me to join a bowling league in eighth grade. So I was 13 years old, kind of started a little later in life to take it to where I was able to take it. But I just came addicted to it. You know, it's one of those things that if you have a passion for something, practice isn't practice. My mom would drop me off at the bowling alley and I'd bowl 50 games a day. I mean, it was just trying to get better, wow. trying to get better. And uh, again, you know, I was able to get to that level. Uh, my highest finish on the PBA Tour, it's a regional event, was second. I did cash on the national tour. And it's just neat to think about, uh, thinking that I was the first one-handed bowler, professional bowler. It's, a, it's an you? honor. Yeah, it's an Were honor. Were you really? Yeah. Continuing to talk about something that, well, it was a very dark time for you, Mike. I know that I had skin cancer, just a little tiny little bit on my leg, and it was a small C for me. They were able to go in and clear it up immediately. But any kind of cancer is serious, and but you had a big C cancer. Tell me how you found out about it and how it changed your life. Yeah, I uh, was just driving with my wife and had an itch on my neck, scratched it, and felt a lump. Hmm. And it was at that time where pretty much everything started. You know, uh, my wife said, "You better go get that checked out." About a week later, I had forgotten. I turned my head, felt it again. It was time to get it checked out. And as it turns out, it ended up being uh, throat cancer. I'm not a smoker. Uh, it's just one of those things, unfortunately, that happened that I had to battle through. And this was life-threatening? 
Yeah, it, it, it's one of those, if you don't get it treated and, you know, certainly quick, it could have been others, other famous people uh, have, have passed away from it, unfortunately. Yeah. Tell me, how did it, how did it change your life? How, what resources did you use to shine a light in those dark times? Yeah, I remember the night that uh, I found out that I had cancer, and it just so happened my, my daughter was down from college and um, told the family, you know, it's, it's a dark time, obviously. So, yeah, I, it, it's one of the worst days of my life, let's put it that way. It's easy, easy to think that way. Um, after the emotion of that, my wife and I, I just said, you know what, I feel like having a glass of wine or three <laughs> at the end of the night. So we went to this establishment, we went to a local restaurant, we sat at the bar, and I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live, sitting at the bar, and as I am, as a one-handed person, I get it, you know, people will look at me and, and know or, you know, assume, hey, I, I know what's wrong with him, he has one hand. And that's fine, I like having one hand, so it's not, a, not necessarily a bad thing for me, but that's kind of the assumption. But it was the first time in my life that I was sitting somewhere, and as people were looking at me, they didn't really know what was wrong with me. Yeah. I was sitting there with cancer, and it really struck me. I turned around, and I looked at all the other people in the restaurant, and I thought to myself, you know what? There's countless other stories in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I may look at somebody and just think, hey, here's whatever I think. Yeah. We all have our stories. We never really know when we're in a crowd of people what all they're going through what what dark times they're having yes but you were inspired and you were motivated by your family your friends and you were able to shine a light in that dark time tell us tell us about that well when you go through those times and you're not sure how it's going to you're going to come out on the other end you know you start thinking a bucket list and things you want to do in your life there's a couple things that i wanted to do one I have yet to do, I, I'd like to hit another pro bowling stop. I haven't done that yet, and uh, it's still on the list. I, who knows how well I do? It's been a few years. But I wanted to try comedy. and it's Comedy? Something, yes. I always wanted to try comedy. And uh, very fortunate over the last few years, I've been trying it and uh, having a good time with it. So one of your dreams in life was to be a stand-up comedian, and it took cancer. Yes. And then being cured from cancer coming out of it to start writing your your comedy and then starting to stand up and perform it in front of people and now years later you are a practicing professional paid professional entertainer yeah it, it's a lot of fun <laughs> and you know the fun part about it is yeah, I talk a lot if, mostly about having one hand and it's self-deprecating it, it, these are the things that I've been doing my whole life <laughs> and uh, I enjoy it I like I said I like having one hand is this thing on is this on he's but, funny uh, <laughs> we I have a good time with it I love it uh, you know it, it's one of those things that again hopefully I've been doing it my whole life and it's just something that brings us together I really think you know, when we come back with Mike, we're going to be t not hitting some golf balls, but we're also going to be talking about a new foundation that Mike has started that's going to help a lot of people. Make sure you stay right there, and we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Match Play right after these messages. Introducing the newest addition to Zero Friction's performance arsenal. The Zero Friction Laser Pro Pistol Grip Rangefinder. The Laser Pro comes with a stable, pistol-shaped comfort grip that is lightweight with an easy-to-read scope. The device vibrates when you are zeroed in on your target and conforms with USGA and USGA handicap guidelines. Shoot on point without taking you out of the zone. Golf only exists because it's fun. What is special about golf is the relationships. Being out there with your family, your friends, so many different chances and opportunities are presented from the game of golf. Tune is brilliant. It's always first class experiences. Courses that they run, they want it to be a, a, as good as possible, and it makes a big difference for the experience. Why wouldn't you select Trim? You're selecting the best of the best. You know the quality you're getting, you know the experience you're getting. There's nobody better.
How many shots do you throw away from the sand, the rough, or even the fairway? What if there was a way you could own a great short game instantly? Introducing the all-new Alien Roswell Sand Wedge. The Alien Roswell's advanced design sole with the exclusive gravity rail system makes it nearly impossible for you to chunk it. I practice thousands and thousands of hours with my traditional sand wedge, but you don't have to with the Alien Roswell. Now you can try the instant automatic answer to solving your short game by going to aliengolf.com. Augusta Ranch Golf Club in Mesa has been voted the best executive course in Arizona. Challenging for all levels of players, it's family friendly and fun. Plus, it won't take you all day to play. There's an excellent practice range with PGA professionals to help you with your game and be sure to enjoy delicious food and beverages at the Scratch Pub and Grill. Make your next tee time at Augusta Ranch Golf Club by calling 480-354-1234 or by going to Augusta Ranch Golf. Com. And now back to Match Play with your host, Ray Adams. All right, Mike Boland, my guest today, and here we are ready to hit some golf balls, Mike. And uh, we've got our drivers, we've got our gloves. Um, I just took a second to slip it on there during the break. Well, I'm glad we were able to hit some balls because I'll tell you what, it took me three hours to get this glove on. I <laughs> had to use my mouth. I mean, it takes a while for me. Let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. You know, Mike, I, I heard that you took your daughter out um, to play some golf. How'd that go? It went really well. It, it, she was asking for some pointers, and the first thing she asked me is, how do you grip a golf club? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know how two-handed people grip a golf club. I have no idea. You guys have like opposable thumbs. I think, I don't know if it's, I, I have no idea. We had to get YouTube out, and we looked and saw how people with two hands <laughs> grip a golf club. I have no idea. All right, Mike has, uh, on a more serious note, Mike has formed a foundation. And you've named this foundation after your mom and dad. Tell us about this and what it is that this foundation will be doing for folks. What we're going to be doing is helping people afford prosthetics. You know, uh, as you and I have talked before, I don't wear one now. I did when I was younger. My mom and dad made sure that I had the ability to have a choice of wearing a prosthetic and they're not cheap and sometimes insurance doesn't cover everything. Mm -hmm. That's where the Joe and Marie Bolin Foundation, I'm naming it after them because of what they did for me, yeah. that's where that's going to come into play to help people afford prosthetics that they need to lead a full life. The Joe and Marie Boland Helping Hands dot org. Dot org. We're going to hit some golf balls here, but we're starting with Mike Boland hitting some golf balls. Mike, how do you do it with one hand? Well, show me. Here's the way I do it. So first of all, you know, when a two-handed person with opposable thumbs and I believe interlocking pinkies, if I'm not mistaken, I've, have, I've read this online. We, I don't know. We, we have it. It looks Is like that this. How you do it? Oh gosh. Okay, yeah. something like that. I don't know how you guys do that. Here's <laughs> a. But when a two-handed person, you know, you're you're in the center. You can see how open the golf club is right uh -huh. there. When I hold it, I hold it this way. You know, this is exactly how I, but it, because of the angle I have to hold it at, it does close the club face. So it hoods it a little bit. It does. So I always have to kind of club up while I'm playing, if that makes sense. Obviously it does to does you. Does that help you to draw the ball a little bit or to hit it straighter? To straighter kind of... for me. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot right now. What I try to do is when I line it up, I line everything up right here because this is about where my arm is going to come back down. I mean, some of this stuff, it reminds me of bowling. You know, you, you try to be very technical. You have your push away, you have your steps. Same thing here. I try to keep it the kind of the same way in golf. So let's see what I can do here, Ray. Let's give it a, give it the old college try, as they say. Wow. <laughs> do that again. Let's do it again. Let's give it another shot. I love this tee, by the way. Okay, again, you know, try to line it up this way. Make sure I come back down, keep my elbow straight like we all need to do, and then take the approach. Wow. Great shot. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Now, when you get over to the uh, putting, is that a little bit, how, how do you handle that? That is a very interesting question when it comes to the putting. My putting, I, I look at myself, first of all, if you don't mind me saying, my mom always thought I was going to be a right-handed person. Matter of fact, when I was a child, I, when I was a child, she said I used to grab things right-handed. And uh -huh. by the time I was 18, I kind of figured out I wasn't going to be able to grab anything. But uh -huh. So the interesting part about the putting is, 
I actually putt left-handed because that's more to me it's more of the stroke of bowling this way oh so yeah. I when I putt I know you have a right hand putter but I, I putt left-handed it's like my dominant eye and what I can see better you know as far as it, it, it mimics bowling in my eyes that's how I do it amazing not if I can do it but how can I do how it? how can I do it I think you're a natural born athlete well that's very kind of you to say I don't know about that but well, look, professional bowling, loves basketball, good at it too, by the way. And you know, Mike, you and I met through golf when I found out that Mike had been presented a beautiful award for many, many years of service helping a nonprofit organization uh, with their golf tournament, providing scholarships to young people uh, going on to college. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, one of our military heroes. Uh, in our country who had been, who took the call to go be in the Army after 9-11 and he was killed in action, uh, buried at Arlington Cemetery and the family wanted to keep his memory alive and to turn that dark moment again shining a light in the darkness for other people, uh, providing scholarships to young people in his name. And so the Shaw family gave you a beautiful award. I was there that night when he received it and you and I had met there for the very first time. Yeah. I had heard your name and I did not know that for years you were listening to my radio show. Absolutely, I listened to it. <laughs> Friday, Mondays and Saturdays, absolutely. And so we became friends and Mike was able to inspire me. And I was at that time, Mike, and you don't know this, but at that time, I was going through a rather dark time in my life. I had a very, very huge problem that I was dealing with and it went on for months. And I didn't really know how it was going to be solved. And it was not a medical or a, 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 an issue, but it was an issue in our family. And I did not know how it was going to be solved. And it was a dark time for me. And you were a light among other people and resources that helped to shine some light in my dark time. And I really appreciate you for that. Very kind of you to say. I didn't realize that, and I'm sorry. I to know hear that. we all we all many times don't know. Mike, thank you so much for inspiring us and encouraging us. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show today, folks, as much as I did being here at True North with Mike Boland. And make sure you go to Match Play TV on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for lots more. Thanks for joining me today. <laughs> to start your day by getting your energy flowing and your body ready. That's great, but some days I need more. If you want to be great at something, it takes hard work and focus. Other times, I want more. There's nothing better than finding time to slow down for a meal with family and friends. Is there a chance of even more? It's absolutely amazing when you can sit around a fire to finish off the day. I'm so glad I found a place for all my mores. Quality products at a fair price.